Hey there, film fans. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dave. John's off tonight, so welcome back to The Love of Cinema, a pod in which we challenge one another to discuss movies, both new and old, with a strictly positive critical eye. That's right. And to avoid <laughs> lazy negativity, we've decided to make this episode a drinking game. So that means that any time we say anything negative... Or our intro is super slow. Yes, that's right. We're just being very careful. You know, we're trying to cover all of our parts here. We're understudies here. So if we say anything negative, you're going to hear the sound. That sound means we have to take a drink, and we hope you drink along with us. So, pour yourselves a glass, grab your shot. We're going to discuss a movie. Tells you why you should keep your desktop tidy. And always use a password manager. (laughs) Cheers. The password manager... Talk to me. This is important for the movie. Talk to me about a password manager because I, I, had, okay, I, had Wall, I, I got Wall Street Journal, New York Times for free. I just and they're like, we need a password. It should be this. And I was like, I can't have 10 different. Pa- I'm going to forget all the passwords. OK, so things like I, I run LastPass on mine um, okay. and it's basically you have one password um, to log into that and it stores and generates all of your passwords inside that. So when you go to a website, it pops up. And if you're, as long as you're logged in with your master password, it will put the password in for you that you've stored for that particular website. So you can have, you have 50 million different passwords and they're 15 characters long and they're random and they've got special characters in them, which means it's going to take like 30,000 years to brute force crack it. And they, that, that basically stores it for you. And they keep that under like 256 bit in, like so yeah they can get hacked as much as they like you're not going to decode that in about a million and a half years so this isn't the same thing as just saving password and this says if you want to save the no. password no it's not it's uh i mean saving yeah i mean you can do that and and it's stored in you know your google or whatever they've they've started to pick up some of that that functionality but the password manager it's a separate plugin for like chrome and that sort of thing and it yeah it stores that but it'll also generate like a really really hard to like decrypt password so in case the kids are haven't rolled their eyes and aren't lost because they might actually sit there and be like you know that makes sense i should actually do that what do you use i use LastPass. um there's there's a ton of them um Sweet. Yeah, it was funny uh, when uh when I was at work, these uh, they have the IT guys come in every now and then for like big events and like scare the shit out of the people in the audience by telling them how easy it is to crack all this shit. And oh, they yeah, show them the, the trick with the location services and stuff. And he tells a story about one kid who um, like something happened and they're like, yeah, he, he, like we don't know why like this happened. And he's like, they're like, he only has like, you know, we don't need monitoring. He only has one email address. Um, and the, wow. the IT guy was like, he looked at the parents and he looked at the kid and he's like, do you want to tell them or should I? And it turns out this kid had like six different email addresses. One he uses for Instagram, one he uses for his girlfriend, one he uses for other girls. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but nice. no, no two of them were like, so if one of them got hacked, it didn't matter. You All you had to do was change the password on, like, on that one service because that was the only one that email was associated with. So this is a good example. Yeah, it's so a good have example. A so have one email for your don't, girlfriend, don't, one email for your wife, it, yeah, one email for your mistress. It. That's probably not the best example, but it's a good good behavior to get into. Dave, your day job is you run an audiovisual uh, conference lab, basically, and I guess yes. that's for what people who wonder. He also is a DP and a filmmaker, and I'm excited to see how this what what we, you we got off track to, early. This is, but this is on track, though. It's okay. It is. I true. know. I know. We've gotten our notes to get right to the movie, but it's like people want to read reviews. Just fucking Google it. You know, you got to hear this shit from the yeah. horse's mouth. We or have a filmmaker if, if who works watch, in an AV lab some, for this yeah. movie where there's essentially no like everything is 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 either video or found footage or whatever this this new style is that's sort of around now. Yeah. Good. We have you, Dave. What are you yeah. Say? Like if, yeah. If you're watching it on YouTube, just click the second part of the bar. Click the second part of the bar. Yeah, we split it up into chapters on YouTube, so you can just click oh, the part of the bar yeah. and go straight Fucking to it. Fucking scooch along if you want to get yeah. a review of the yeah, movie. If, this yeah, is the just, good shit, people. Don't leave, don't leave sassy comments anymore. That you're that one guy that left that comment, and it was such good sass. <laughs> I, good. You're yeah. the reason. You're the reason we do this now. I'm do. I do that extra thing just for you. <laughs> Thank you for the the notes, you dickhead. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Um, all right, we're talking about Missing today. This just hit theaters this past weekend. This is, uh, you know, it's like a sort of sequel. It's a sequel. Hold on, let me, I just I wrote this down. This is I, what I actually, get for it's, notes. It's funny because I heard this has actually been running since like early January. It was oh, uh, Re- Regal Cin- <laughs> no, 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 it came out this week, but it's been running since early January. It was Regal Cinema's um, like mystery movie. 
you know, when you go in and you don't know what movie you're going to be shown. Oh, that's fun. I forgot that. Yeah. Regal and that. it turns out it was a couple of, a couple of times. It was, this, this was the mystery movie. Well, Regal is I mean, losing the war of day. Yeah, I was, I was, but... was going to say that the, the surprise would be that the Regal's still open. But... <laughs> um, I should clarify, this is the standalone quote unquote sequel to Searching. You could call it an installment, perhaps. The original creative team had some story credit to this. Now, that could just be, we don't want to get sued by you, so can we just write this off? This is, we obviously ripped off your idea. Or, you know, I, I haven't digged into the oh, weeds. No, they're, dude, they're building a world. Yeah, they, they're building I, I a figured, world here. I figured. Because that, that documentary at the beginning is literally Searching. The one she's watching in the very beginning. That's right. Is and that's the, the entire yeah. plot of, yeah, it's, it's now, exactly now, what happens in Searching. Now, again, when the contracts are drawn and you guys are a team at this point, it's like, okay, well, now how can we actually enjoy this and have fun with this? But yes, mm. it's not exactly, um, it's not also, exactly. There's, there's one other thing going on that ties them together that I'll talk about later. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, um, we're talking about that in one second. If you're new to our podcast, thank you so much for joining us. We usually have our third um, co-host, John. Sometimes we have guests, but today it's Dave and I. Uh, at the end of the episode, we'll give you our recommendations, what we've been watching in our segment. What you've been watching? Um, we try to keep it spoiler free for a couple minutes in case you haven't seen this movie, because I know how frustrating that is when a podcast just starts for our subscribers, Especially this for instance. One. Yeah, exactly. And this is twisty <laughs> and such. So, you know, in case you just want to know whether or not to see the movie and for whatever reason you trust our drunk opinion, because we do actually drink on this here podcast, you spoiler free for 10 minutes, then you can pause it and come back. And we have had many people tell us they've done that recently. So that's really cool. Yeah. Sometimes things just get lost in the ether um, of my podcast. So the fact that people come back to our I think is really, really, really cool. Uh, and we're going to get through gripes of the week. So as we mentioned before, if you just want to get our initial takeaways and our initial review, scoot along. If you're on YouTube, Dave is the chapters. I'll put them in the show notes. But we're just going to get through a couple little things before we get started. Anything else you want to say before we shout our sponsors out? Actually, can you shout our sponsors out? No, I don't know who they are. Yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> it's for all of us. <laughs> oh, jeez. There's only two of us, and that was three buzzes. Yeah, um, you, hit, you hit every button I had here. I don't have a fuck you Dave button on here. I think you knew that. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about, we'll talk about missing it's in implied. a second, but I, mean, I want to talk about one thing before you talk about our, oh, fuck it. Our sponsors are Carlos Barroso is sort of our beer sponsor. I hope he's doing well. He keeps posting mm. on Instagram. Go follow him. He's in the show notes. Dasein has provided all of the music. He is sort of, he, he's getting more and more streams on Spotify, on all of your music servers. Um, he's in ambient music playlists, which he's really proud of. He was featured on a podcast recently um, talking about his music making. He's so awesome. And so we, we're so happy he's given us this music for free and he lets you use his music he kind of does just so like open source it so if for whatever reason you want to use it contact him and yes. he'll be very very nice <laughs> don't just steal first. it don't just steal it but he's very nice <laughs> he will respond and he'll thank you for listening to his music so that's dasein the artist dasein d-a-s-e-i-n check out the show notes and yeah we have a link tree that dave set up so you can find all that information yeah, very go quickly, straight to him socials etc um Two clicks here at music. I want to say this is not a gripe. I need to say something about the AMC thing with Nicole Kidman, which fucking, you know, I have a fucking MA in music and music uh -huh. education, and I didn't notice this. So we, I have a gripe from New Year's 2021. So a well over a year where I said, we got to stop the Nicole Kidman thing. And of course, we all know the Nicole Kidman thing on AMC. If you don't go to AMCs, you still probably know what it is. But anyway, she's done no, the same. No, I think every, everybody knows what it is, even if they don't. Go. Yeah, sometimes it's yeah. the long one. Sometimes it's the short one. It's always a surprise. But anyway, I didn't notice this. And how fucking foreshad how foreboding is this? Dave, have you ever heard of the DSE Day? No. So DSE Day is part of the Requiem Mass sequence. Every single Requiem Mass, Mozart has one, Brahms has one. Um, I kind of like uh, the John Rutter one. It's a cheesy, like, churchy one. Um, Does Amadeus um, have one? Um, yes, because the score to Amadeus, they, I'm buzzing you because fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> they play his one the, song? <laughs> the score to Amadeus is, for the most part, the Requiem Mass. Yes, Dave, that's right. So they, they put in some other Mozart in there, including like the Magic Flute and stuff. But the most of the score is just clips of the Requiem Mass because that is the ultimate conceit. We start at the end and then go back. And the end essentially is post-death, so Requiem. Anyway, also the Lion King is a Requiem Mass. So um, that's Hans Zimmer's Requiem. That's why it's his best score. Fuck, man, I love Interstellar. Also, there yeah, is I've an... Been, I've, been, I've been just saying, I've been watching a bit of Letter Kenny, so fucking Peter Patter, Jeff. Okay, Peter Pat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can. You can. But well, now we don't have John. But no, this is important because it, it's going to come back to the AMC thing. So anyway, the DSE day is this. I have this on. This is the DSE day. You ready? 
That's the DSC day. It's this sequence of notes. It's this very specific sequence. I could, yes, I well, brought I, out the fucking I keyboard hope, for this. I, yeah, I hope they came out on your end because they're not coming out of mine. Okay, let me let me jack up. My, I'm gonna jack up my mic, Dave. You're gonna be mad at me. Yeah, no, the noise cancellation is just ripping it right out of mine. I can't hear a thing. Oh, it is spiking in my. Sorry, that was loud. Um, it is spiking in my logic. Anyway, it's those sequence of notes. It's very simple. It's into the unknown from Frozen. It's the Squid Game score. It's but it's and it's in the so Scar and Mufasa. Actually, their early scene, like it's to die for. Like it, literally, it's going on the entire time. It's shit. I'm spiking my mic. I gotta turn my thing down again. Hold on. Okay, that's the that's the level I want to be at. Anyway. Okay. So the DSC day is it's this death theme. They call it, they literally call it like the death theme. Again, that's why Requiem Mass is the death mass. Long story short is the fucking Nicole Kidman AMC trailer starts with the DSE day, which again is the death sequence in the Requiem Mass, the death <laughs> mass. It's literally into the unknown, which is literally like it's like the dead speaking to her in Frozen 2 for my Frozen 2 fans. It's in Star Wars. When I mean, he realizes his aunt and uncle are dead, it plays it. It goes da 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 da, and then out of nowhere, it just goes da 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 da. It's literally those sequence of notes. The fucking AMC with Nicole Kidman. It's foreshadowing that this is going to want to make you either kill yourself, or it's just like it's gonna stick around and it's always gonna be there like a fucking ghost. It ha- Come on! How, what fucking PSA starts with the death mass? It doesn't make any fucking sense. I mean, consider when it was made. <laughs> That's not negative, people. I just want to get us drinking. Also, um, they yeah, they did they didn't know if they were going to survive past you know five screenings of that at that point. So touche, good point. Yeah. DSC day. It's Latin. You gotta you gotta figure out how to spell. But I couldn't believe that that was in there. Also, speaking of Interstellar, Hans Zimmer's second Nobody best was, score. But <laughs> I said it. That's right. Lion King's number one. People. I know Elton John wrote the songs. Hans Zimmer wrote all the fucking. Was it score, in Moonfall? Man. Dave, <laughs> how drunk? Do you, how drunk do you want to be tonight? It's Sunday night here. All right. Um, anyway, long story short. Um, look up the the DSC. I can't believe it's in there. And there's an Interstellar reference for sure near the end of missing which we will get to that sequence of minor keys actual gripe oh yeah we haven't done our gripes of the week if you're new to the podcast people thank you so much again uh we usually try to gripe and get some shit off our chest that wasn't one of our gripes of the week but dave we usually start with you with the gripes of the week um so do you have a gripe of the week yeah, you, you know what I hate? It's when your fucking co-host goes on with something you have Stop, nothing, no, no, nothing about. No. You know nothing about for like five fucking minutes. I'm it's... educating you. I'm giving you an education. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's in Star Wars. Your I don't, favorite have, a, I don't film. have a gripe. I don't you, have a gripe. <laughs> of course you have a gripe. I don't know. I don't even know who you are anymore. What do you mean you don't have a gripe? Not this week. I got, I, got, I got a lot off my chest last week. So uh, do you been, have a gripe? Um, I have a list. Let's see which ones I want to I want to pull out today. <laughs> Jesus, how bad a week did you have? Are you okay? No, I Need just... a hug? Um, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an easy grab. My, the, the DSE Day one was even more of a grab, but go ahead. Okay, I think it's time that we have a horn on our cars specific for when we just want to let the other cars know we know we made a mistake. All right, I'm going to call it like the my bad honk because I was driving home yesterday and it was very late and there was a merge and I didn't really see it and I like scooted ahead and I messed up the merge. It's supposed to go one, then the other, then the other. So I went two to one and the person like laid on the horn and then they passed me and they like looked out the side of me as they were honking so that I would see them and I I just wanted to be like, I know, I know I made a mistake. I don't know what point you're trying to prove because now you just look like an asshole because I'm trying to apologize to you. I mean, but I had no alert, way of, they were. I had, I had no way, <laughs> I had no way of communicating this. So I wish there was like a simple little pop pop or like something like, like kind of cheeky or something so we can know because road rage is an issue. To be were honest, you? I know a lot of people die in car crashes in this country, but we have so many shitty drivers in this country. I can't believe we don't have more accidents. The fact that I can drive to New York City and not mm. see an accident every single time and new jersey drivers are the worst and i'm from new jersey so was like it, was this was this in new jersey yeah of course it then, was. It does, then it doesn't matter don't worry but, about it but i had yeah for, it was like status quo but it, we have a serious road rage issue and i just feel like us being able to sort of like have little conversations with each other on the road would, would just help everybody's uh, self-esteem and, and everybody's point of view. just settle it down yeah jersey's crazy man i even i like you want to gripe about new jersey <laughs> no no just just driving in jersey and the the 
the way they've designed their roads, like the fucking loop de loops and all that the sort of bullshit. The jug handle turns, yeah. man. Yeah, like what the hell, man? You like, turns the only are thing very I've seen tricky. The only thing I've seen, that, I've seen two things as crazy as that. One is a one roundabout in Adelaide that if you know what where it is, you don't fucking go there. And the other one is uh, Melbourne when you have to like pull off to the left, wait for the lights to change and turn right because of the trams. So they'll just fucking run you over in the CBD. I know. I so, like I yeah. like the idea of a light rail, but it really fucks with traffic. I I, yeah. I would drive right into a light rail train, I think, because I'm from New Well, Jersey. you can't even fucking merge, so, you know. Mm. <laughs> I'm a fantastic driver. Are you ready to get into missing? <laughs> yeah, we probably should. Let's do it. And John's not here, so this might be our shortest episode of the week. I shouldn't dig on John this. Actually, last time I was wrong about that, but today. Yes. They already know how long the episode is. These people listening, these fuckers. <laughs> we, we love you guys. Like and subscribe. Give, give us a comment or review. We'll respond. Yeah, l- l- like and subscribe. Subscribe. We'll, we'll abuse you some more. How about this? Yes. We, I, I believe right now we have a perfect rating. All right. So please like wow. and review if you want to knock that down a little bit. Knock yourself out. Go ahead. We need yeah. a review to bust up our fucking perfect record. All right. So this here movie, Missing, supposedly just came out after the mystery box was opened. And instead of getting vomit flavored movie, you got Missing, the surprise <laughs> anthology sequel to. It's not Feel Around Theater. Searching Feel Around. <laughs> you know what's funny though? I did I did text myself a note that I just wanted to remember on my watch. And I, I did think like so people probably see me with like my wrist in front of me and my other hand like on my wrist, like hiding in front of me. And they probably thought I was getting a little handsy in the, in the seat, but I, I wasn't. Yeah, from behind, definitely. From behind. <laughs> Oh, come on. We had the comfy leather, big leather seats, so it was hard to see, but uh, I was more worried about the people next to me. But yeah, you're right. Okay, anyway, so this movie, um, I just came out of this, by the way. So this is so fresh. This is fresh in my like literally less than an hour ago, I got out of this theater. Um, so this movie was directed by Nicholas Johnson, and there's a co-directing credit of Will Merrick, who wrote the screenplay. Will Merrick wrote the screenplay, but the story idea comes from not just the two of them, but also Sev Ohanian and Anish Chiganti, who were the original creators of Searching. So again, the team, the teamwork is real. Uh, mm. I kind of hope there's more of this. Um, hard to describe. This is this is in that world where they don't just have a camera. Everything is, I'll say found footage. That's not the right way of describing no, it. No, it's, it's not. It's it's it kind of it kind of puts you in a world where you're it's it's almost like watching it on I think they call them desktop films because oh, okay. everything is from the perspective of a desktop or a camera in in the house. So a lot of the time you spend looking just at the desktop, but like you don't actually. There's no tracking camera shots. There's no none of that sort of stuff. You can only see where something where the, a camera is, and and that sort of style. It's uh, it's become the thing since I think Unfriended was the first one to do it. Interesting. Um, and uh, I've actually worked on one of these. Uh, Which, we shot one. What? We shot. We shot one during the pandemic. Yeah. Did you DP it? Because I love when they I got did, the DP credit. Did, and it's like, huh. no, I did not DP it. I was. I was like, well, I, I helped everyone. I was basically my job was to call in on Zoom and um, set up everyone's lighting that they had in their house, and no one could go to anyone else's house because it was shot during the pandemic. We maintained strict See, protocols. That, that's literally. So yeah. I was literally telling them how to set up a lighting rig with whatever they had in their house. I fucking MacGyvered their house. It was, <laughs> so, it was funny. So like, yeah. Did you go in person no. with like mask on? What did you no, do? No, no, no. I was, I was, it was over zoom. I'm like, what do you, you got? And they, showed, they showed me. I'm like, all right, put that here, put that here. Yeah. Right. It was and that we, like, phase of the background. pandemic. Yeah. It was, yeah. No one was going outside. Well, I, I uh, even, even, the, even the, even the special effects, cause it was a horror film. Like, they dropped off the the blood and stuff like and the prosthetics and stuff. That's so fucking fun. Keep going. And yeah, they had to they had to like basically um, organize it themselves. Because I, I thought that about this, where I was like, did Ken Leung just? Um, he could have easily just done those FaceTime videos like on his free time. But I'm, I'm sure yeah. they like, or, or if, if nothing else, they could have zoomed in and been like, that's really good. Let's do it one more time. And um, this time, <laughs> yeah. To be honest, um, and like the one I worked on was actually shot with the existing cameras. Um, but I, most of these ones are not shot. They're shot with like proper cameras and of course, lenses. Of course, but, of course. Yeah, and then they make it look bad. Bad? So. Well, you know what I mean? Well. No, could, but like the grain and stuff like that. Yeah. And like the when you like the, when they punch in on the screen and stuff like that, they make think, it look like a webcam. You think that bums them out when they film something and like, oh, we have to grade it down. They have to make it look shittier. It, it, <laughs> it looks too good. It looks too good. And you're like, oh, but the, t- the clarity, the texture. No, nah, they love it. 
<laughs> Actually, you know what? I, you know what? One of my big filmmaking. You're you're more of a filmmaker than me, obviously. But I think one of my favorite things to hear from other filmmakers is they love having such specific t- parameters. Because it's the assignment, like w- whenever somebody asks the DP, like, what do you think? And it's like, just fucking tell me what you want, man. And let me make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, even if it's something like that, it's like, okay, challenge accepted. Let's go. Would you agree with yeah. that? Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm never a just tell me what you want. I don't think yeah. people like Roger Deakins as well. Rog, Rog has, Rog has him opinions, man. He's like, how about we do this? And everybody just bows and they go off and set but, some but, lights. But does he want you to That's talk like- first though? He wants you to talk first and then he'll go, how about we do this? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he comes in with a fairly strong idea, and it, it usually, like usually, the idea gets accepted because let's face it, he's a master. But yeah, so a lot of the times there are discussions, like certainly in mine, because I I don't know everything. I should make so. a pyramid of people that we're obsessed with on this show, and very high up at the top is Mark Rylance. Daniel Day Lewis yeah. is like in those weird category where if you hear his name anymore, you're just gonna start like fucking playing us off. So Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> is up there. Mark Rylance, though, this year especially, he's like near yes. the top. But we actually kind of started as a Roger Deakins podcast because we started with 1917, <laughs> <laughs> almost kind of for you yeah. as our first episode was 1917 and Little Women and you know other things. But um, I feel like he is. If we had a Mount Rushmore of people on our show, I feel like yeah. Deakins and rylance are just I like kinda, i kind of want the, that made now <laughs> i want to i want to our rushable model we should use this time to say we're looking for uh, other sponsors here as you can tell by you listening to this and you never get interrupted for commercial breaks so you're fucking welcome all right sorry um let's get into missing here so oh, we pitched- uh, we're not into missing yet <laughs> nick get out of here. I'm, just, I just, I'm so trigger happy you should have never given me controls to these uh nick johnson will merrick and then of course our original creators Sevohenian and Anish Chagatsi. But this specific this specific movie has a great cast. Nia fucking long people. I'm talking the best man. Big Mama's house, right? All of the best mans, really. Boiler Room. I mean, Nia Long is just such a legend. And then there's a new Jonah Hill movie coming out. Uh, a movie that with Nia Long and Jonah Hill, which the trailer, we, we really need some more movie comedies. So we'll see how this one fares. That's where I'm at with Nia Long. What's up? She stars as Grace for anybody who's seen this. And I just saw this. Is it Grace Jones? I can't remember her fucking last name. Grace Jones. No, Grace Jones is a singer from the 70s. Yes. What's, she what's, was um she was in Conan. Oh my god, you're right. Oh my god, yeah. you're right. Conan the I, Destroyer. I listen to some Grace Jones shit and I just I like I I, rem- I have a very vivid memory of it at like a, ca- a log house and her singing like Tomorrow from Annie like as if I was at Studio 54 and it's oh my so God. fucking funny. It was like she did like a 10 minute version of La Vie en Rose where she just started singing La Vie en Rose, La Vie en Rose and she just started saying La Vie en, like she just started shouting it and, and everybody shut the fuck up and listened because it was Grace Jones. Like Oh my God, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it had a th- every song had a three minute intro. Man, they had so much patience back then considering how much cocaine they were on so i think it was, oh shit um can you what what what's the last name what's what's what are grace's and june's last names it just says grace and june and imdb and i just saw the movie yeah. and i'm like what is it i i can't remember either um <laughs> i just saw this too i literally it's we'll get come to that but anyway okay. um, so um storm reed plays mm. June. Now, Storm Reid, you're excited because she's going to be in The Last of Us, which we both just started, and please I'm stick ex- around. I'm excited because of the performance I just saw, to be honest. Fuck yeah! She's also in um, um, Euphoria. She plays Zendaya's younger sister, Gia Bennett. I, that's got, I got to double-check that to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She plays mm. Zendaya's younger sister in Euphoria, Gia Bennett. So, I mean... Come on now. Like, you can't be on a bigger TV show than that. You've got Tim Griffin, who's this guy that I love when they get these villains who are in, like, the Born Supremacy, Central Intelligence, Prime Suspect, American Sniper. You get these old, like, criminal, like, war people. They were just, like, sitting around waiting for jobs. So he plays James, the church guy, which we'll come up to later in a second. Ken Leung from Lost, <laughs> mm. right? Ken Leung from Lost, who plays Miles in Lost. And, of course... He's our initial villain. He's our, he, well, yeah, well, I mean, we don't want to, again, we're in spoiler free territory here, Dave. Um, <laughs> but this is a twisty thriller, so it's one of those, you know, et cetera. But he plays Kevin in this one. Uh, but Ken Leung was also in Rush Hour. He was so fucking yes. awesome. as the villain in Rush Hour. Fuck yeah. He's Amy awesome in Lan- everything. Amy Landecker is in he- is, plays Heather in this movie. Megan Suri plays Vina. Uh, anybody else of note that I've seen before? I feel like I've seen Daniel Henney, who plays Agent Park before. But... Um, hmm. Yo Kim, 
de Almeida Javi. He plays Javi in this film. He uh. was in Fast Five. He's one of the villains. He plays Reyes. He's also in Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford. Yep. He's in Desperado. He's in Behind Enemy Lines. This is a legend. The Warrior Nun um, series I've that was never, just that. I've never seen anyone eat up a FaceTime screen like that guy. Oh. Like he... He was just know brilliant. your job, man. And he was yeah. so so good. I can't wait to see. I hope he gets some more like work for the contemporary audiences because as Javi, like man, to be honest, he was so good when it started to become a bit of a this might be like this what happened in Colombia might be bad, and she's got this guy running around. Yeah, and I'm I started to worry for him. He was so good. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I was yeah. like, if anything, ha- it's like it's like you know, if they kill the dog, I'm out. It's like if they hurt him, I'm done. It I'm was the fuck co- out of this movie. It was cool too that they're clever with the desktop idea with the other main characters so that you can still mm. get them in these sort of master shots. But with Javi, it was always the FaceTime. And, and I'm not even counting that little bridge sequence thing where yep. you could see it from afar. That, that doesn't really count. We never really saw him I've, just I've like I've literally in a done that. I've literally done that to my auntie in Australia. Oh, I, I went. I went into Times Square and called her and went, "Hey, load up this webcam." And I'm standing there waving at her. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's you know it's really cool. That you went into Times Square for your family. That's fucking love, man. It was very late. I got <laughs> so much so- cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> so many people just walking by like, hey, how's it going? Drugs? What drugs? What drugs? You got drugs? Good news. Hey, everybody has gone. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Oh, my God. Those street performers that, you know, they make a good living there, but they uh, they realize they could double their profits if they also sell cocaine. Rick yeah. Chambers plays uh, the Elmo, morning host. Elmo hooked me up, man. Those <laughs> characters... <laughs> Those characters are fucking entrepreneurs, man. They know how. They know I don't how to do know it. how they haven't had their ass sued off, to be honest. Like they, they yeah. Anyway, they have their little ca- carrying on. Let's like ha- Lauren Mars. Okay, Rachel. should we talk okay. about how we well, felt? Let me, we're, let me, we're twenty-seven I'll, minutes in. Ah, uh, <laughs> fucking John's not even here. God damn it. Okay, um, everything we said though stands. Okay, um, let me let me give you the IMDb description of this. It's a th- we, I think everybody can just guess what it is. But but then again, I didn't know who was missing. But what, what we should, should we say who's missing in the thing? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'll give you the IMDb description, and then, Dave, you can take it away spoiler-free in our 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah. our spoiler-free 10 minutes um, zone here. Okay. After her mother five. goes... <laughs> it's already 20. <laughs> After her mother goes missing, a young woman, that is Storm Reed, tries to find her from home. The mom is Nia Long, using tools available to her online. So she's an online stalker, as we all are nowadays. She does the normal shit. That's what she does. That's our jumping off point to find her missing mom. Dave, take it away. Initial thoughts, reactions. What'd you think? What did you feel? Um, I didn't know what to, I'd seen the trailer. So I went in. I'm like, I don't know how, like, is this going to be jump scary? Is this going to be like what it's going to be? Yeah. And it was great. It it tells a story, and it tells a story in a really I want I, I don't want to say unique, but it, it is kind of unique uh, in the style that they've now developed with this desktop thing. Ding ding um, they, ding 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 ding. If it wasn't in the style, it wouldn't be unique. It's in the style. It's unique. It's that simple. It's great. Yeah, and it, like but the, I feel like they kind of they played with it a little bit more in this one than they have in previous uh, like installments. But so many movies in the last twelve months are really driving the point that like some cinema, especially horror th- thrillers, um, is a very communal experience that you just can't get at home. And this is one of them. Cause my yeah. audience was reacting like a mofo, man. It was, it was so cool to sit in a theater, like in a theater and have this play itself out. Um, the performance of the leads, I just want to, I really credit those guys, like the major cast, like the main cast, this wouldn't have worked if they couldn't sell it so well. It really depended, yeah. It really depended on like Storm Reed, like because she's in the foreground of every shot for a certain period of time, and it would not have worked if the performance wasn't so damn strong. Um, I just want to say the, as well as having worked on one of these, the editing and animation. I had the thought while I was watching it because they really went to town. I'm like, this would have taken longer than the shoot to to develop this thing, and then I found out it took like three plus years to make. Wow. So yeah, the direct the, the directors are actually sneaking into the screenings right now, watching audience reactions over Good. the weekend. So they yeah, they should. 
Yeah, because um, they like with the the like the Windows desktop and the Mac desktop and all that sort of stuff. That wasn't a recording of the desktop. They built all of that from scratch, and then animated it so that they could get yeah. the angles that they got and like the push ins. And I don't know whether you noticed, but they did a really cool thing with like this because it was computer generated. Like yeah. the camera that they had, obviously, is not they're not filming a screen. This is just like a composite, but right. the camera was moving slightly. It was just it was just a slight movement oh. of the camera to to like keep that. Well, that's like, very it, customary. It's very, the horror, it's, the horror yeah. genre where you don't yeah, know if the camera's going to move. It was very subtle, but it was there. I, I noticed because I, like, I went looking for it at one point, and I realized that, yeah, they're doing that slow movement, and that all had to be animated in. Do you think because Paranormal Activity, I remember being the first because even like The Ring and all these movies, there's some handheld thing because you know that the camera has to be able to move quickly. And as soon as it's handheld, it's like. Any, like at any second, anything from anywhere can happen. And paranormal activity worked, but at the same time, when it went to two and three, it was like it was almost like you needed that. Uh, you know, it's like yeah. it was like a one trick pony kind of thing. Um, hmm. Is is, that, yeah, is that, that? Do you think that's like a horror staple where you just you just need to have that that camera feel like it's it's loose and moving? I don't know. Well, the thing is, it was barely noticeable, but they put it they, like it was just discernible if you look for it. Like you'd see yeah. just a tiny bit of movement. They didn't go over the top with it, and it really worked because it gave it that extra realism because your eye was bouncing around a little bit but they didn't oversell it which was it was perfect what they did was perfect the composite on this the guys who animated it and i I tell you what if you when you watch this the second time because you might just read the extra stuff that's on the screen because something is not right in this fucking world they built like Uh. there is a from missing through to this uh from missing through um Searching, searching. yeah yeah there's a a series of news articles at the sides that talk about an ongoing alien sighting no is that next and I, are we going aliens next no Co- they're not going they're not going to aliens i feel like that's just like because i used to do this shit as well like i i would put like um i designed some stuff for a scooby-doo show once and i wrote the articles on the newspapers that came in and like it, there was an ongoing theme through them every piece of cg i did from like 90 something to like 2000 10 i want to say had doctor who's tardis hidden hidden in it somewhere like (laughs) cg guys will play with this stuff and they will go to town if you let them go and i feel like these guys went to town and hidden in this movie there's a fucking alien invasion story if you read the side notes jesus christ yeah so So the easter eggs are being planted now you think they are they're never going to go there but like it's there's like unidentified lights and unidentified aircrafts over something and like this that was just in this one like searching has more well, I but, wonder. Yeah. I wonder if because this is made for modern audiences, and a modern audiences go online and look shit up. We don't just sit around and you know we we, we do true. some investigative I mean, research. There is nothing more satisfying than when you sneak something in and someone notices it because yeah, it's like, like, like you you put it there and no one no one may notice. I, and it's, for, yeah, like, for years. Like, like when when the Batman's bonus scene was a website that didn't tell you anything, it was like, go yeah. oh, fuck yourself. But if somebody found something in a frame and it was a website and then they went to and it was a real mm-hmm. website and it was the same well, website, that would have been like really fun. The Marvel TV shows um, on certain walls and certain shots, there's a QR code. And if you uh, hit that, it takes you to a free comic. Yeah, I feel like they put more time into that, that than like making yeah. sure their stories were clear and succinct and like develop their characters and stuff. But yeah, it's yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's not wrong, but yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, I agree, and I, I will, I will say too. I had a moment, probably early on in the missing in Columbia bit, when when June realized that they were missing in Columbia, and it was, it was, it was a little slow. I will say it's definitely a thriller, yeah. but but the first half hour to forty five minutes, I I wasn't particularly scared no i, rem- I remember that was, that was more about gathering the tools i mean for sure they did a lot of world building yeah. um i wasn't worried um it was very like in my head still like it wasn't like in my core you know in the horror mm-hmm. when it's in your body like it wasn't yeah. there at all i think i i remember the audience laughing at um i'm gonna i keep saying miles because of lost but um <laughs> first <laughs> he for, was such um, a dick and lost <laughs> i know i know i know uh tor- you know but he had a job to do and he whatever anyway yeah. ken leung who plays kevin um when his password like i remember the audience laughing and me being like oh i feel like this is the first time that we all like reacted to something together and that no, was his his username was the thing i fucking laughed at 
I, what, what was his username? Do you remember off the top of your head? Yeah. This, uh, what was his character name again? Uh, it's Ke- it's Kevin. Kevin. Kevin the Stallion. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Not the password. <laughs> the, the username. Yeah. So I remember everybody laughing and me being like, okay, cool. We are having a communal experience at this movie because I was starting to think this is going to be a great stream. Couples yeah. can sit there if they want to go online, if they want to Google something. I mean, the fucking movie is like literally saying that's OK, you know, almost. And so I was like, OK, cool. Like, I'm at peace with this. And it just it does the the thing that my favorite thrillers do. Oh, what's a good example of this? But that's um, that's the thing, though. Like you talk about like people watching it as a stream. Like they came out and they said this this week, like I, I think it was James Cameron talking about it. And he was like, you know, it's it's about people committing to like go down to a single point of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not being distracted. Like, everyone was on their phones during the trailers in my theater, but no one was on their phone during that movie. It held same. their attention. And yeah. it, that's that's what going to the theater is about. It's a commitment. We're all going to go in. We're all going to experience right. the same thing, and we're all going to react as a group. And, yeah, yeah you can't top that. But, People were rowdier at Megan. People were more um, disrespectful oh God, yeah. at, at Megan than they were at this movie, for sure. And we we had some people talking. I had somebody, like, tell somebody to shut the fuck up and stuff. Like, this, this is just the world we live in now. But, um, <laughs> but there was also another time where someone was like, take a picture! And people, like, laughed. And, you know, that kind of stuff is fine. But, um... Weird example, the first Jurassic Park is a slow build, right? But the time oh, you get yeah. to the, t- the T-Rex is almost an hour in. And when that happens, it's like, oh, shit, it's fucking on till the end. And the first hour is so amazing, but it's not a horror movie. And I think actually John said it best when he talked about Jurassic Park, where he's like, it's a horror movie that's pretending to be an adventure movie. But it's not an adventure movie. It is a horror, get me yes. the fuck out of here movie. <laughs> the way we think adventure is, yeah. I can't wait to go out and discover. This is not that. It's this is get 50, me the fuck out of it. It's 50s B movies at, at its it. best it's like yeah. no one be- no one believes the danger right. everyone's oblivious to the danger and then suddenly there's danger so before people think i'm comparing this to jurassic park what i mean by this is the comparison to jurassic world which is made for contemporary audiences very clearly by colin trevorrow and all the producers where they started doing jump scares early on they started giving you the yucks way early on blah, blah, blah. and then some you know the boys being like what about yeah. mom and dad and it's like i don't know oh the raptors and then blah, 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 and, the blah. and they go in out in out in out so much in that movie that by the end of it it's like the payoff isn't necessarily a payoff it's just sort of the last bump it's the last blip, whereas the first movie, re- you can literally arc it very simply. And I think that, that yeah. usually it's not easy, but I feel like that's still the best. This is that this it keeps going up and up and up. And the more I'm guessing who did it, who's to blame, who's to what? The answer doesn't matter because all that yeah. matters is that that line keeps going up like a fucking graph before the Dow Jones is about to but drop. In, in, say, in saying that, real. while you're guessing, it's like you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're and wrong. Who cares? And sometimes <laughs> yeah. you're right. And and sometimes yeah. you're right and sometimes you're wrong and sometimes you question things and then you get mad at yourself for questioning things and you say if i was my friend and i questioned that about my friend's thing but i feel like a bad person but all that really matters is that you're turning the dial turning the dial turning the dial so that the end or near the end that climactic moment right before the you know the denouement before the final like release that's the best part of the movie that has mm. to be that case in a thriller and also, i feel like I, this movie achieves that wholeheartedly so if you don't like this movie it's because you didn't give it the time you just got to give it the time yeah also i love that they addressed your gripe from earlier on where like people guessing pa- people's passwords she tries it yes. and fails yeah <laughs> thank you yeah and then she comes back to it and it's a little easy but at least she understands that like it's gonna but there was a process there it wasn't yeah. just oh, i'm gonna you know hack your password it. in is three yeses same, no is he the one password kind of guy oh i don't know i think so and of course he is we all are <laughs> we all are except for you because you're intelligent <laughs> yeah. and you work in this industry dude i well the, the thing i loved was uh every now and then it would glitch Mm-hmm. like the, the video so, would stop and shit and it, it was like i think i'm not sure if they were to hide the cuts where they've like cut to another scene right. um because i sneakily do that on our youtube videos when john says something inappropriate and we have to take it out but um <laughs> like I, I, well, that, that happened last week but that doesn't happen every week but last week as soon as we finished he was like check this and take that out <laughs> it's like man <laughs> but uh no I, I wasn't sure if it was like to be honest i wasn't sure if they were just putting it in there so it looked like zoom, like a zoom thing or if it was too high to cut or if they recorded the whole thing on jeff's computer <laughs> so. <laughs> Dick. um all right let's go what do you want at the moment in 2011 like my computer Microbe or something? 15. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 15 but that's still eight years in apple time that's like fucking yes. dog years this dog is dying yeah 
Um, soon, Dave and I are going to have new computers soon. You're going to be able to tell at home, I know. We're at 40 minutes. Let's go into, let's go into our spoiler section. What do let's you say? Let's say spoilers on Jesus. <laughs> All right. Spoilers are on. It's funny. I don't even necessarily want to, like, spoil the movie. But... I, yeah, no. We're, I mean, to, well, basically, the only thing we can talk about is, um, like, I have in my theater, yeah. when who the actual villain was was revealed, uh, when the twist was revealed, like gasps people yelling at the screen yeah and like it was it was a visceral reaction it was like because it came out of nowhere because it set up so well we're talking about the real twist people there's a lot of twists but there's some twists are bigger than others not all twists are built built the same so get the fuck out of here if you haven't seen this movie. yeah this is the big one that's gonna ruin everything like when john just out of nowhere says all right we're in spoilers so bond dies and we're like <laughs> Jesus, I, I hope people sprinted to their phones. The to baby steps, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like it was that. Like that was that one got a reaction. But then also, like from that point, it escalated like crazy. Yeah, that, that's um, exactly what I mean. Because that could have been yeah. it. They could have revealed it and then been like, "Gotcha," and then just like just struggled to wrap this up. But also, when that reveal happened, you were like, what the fuck? And then it was like, okay, there is actually a really, really good reason why all of this happened. Yeah, and agree. they go they go through, like, with screenshots, and they go through the whole, like, there's levels, they're in witness you don't protection. Know who, you there's don't, there's you don't, why you, she just... You don't know who's right. Is the dad lying? Is it because is the dad telling the truth at first? You know, there's yeah. all this stuff. You I, very I quickly first, realize like, he's not. But I, th- uh, I thought I was like, it could be the church guy, right? He's that. Mm. Wild, he's the wild card. She said, called him back. That's like Chekhov's call him back, right? So I was like, okay, well that could happen. <laughs> and then the fact that it was him, and then the fact that he was in the car with the hat, it was like, and the fact that, I, that was Kevin just was cleverly a plan. Done. It was yeah, because like, Kevin, you're like, oh, Kevin's innocent. Kevin got gunned down for no reason. And then it was like, oh no, he didn't. Kevin was in on this the whole time and you know what i love about thrillers too is we still don't really know kevin's motive and i'm glad about that because those kinds if we just answer everything if we spend our whole time trying to answer everything but we have to know who's the most important characters here ultimately whether it was a prison thing where they were like i'll do this for you because you're my friend or whether or not it was a payment deal or whatever kevin's reasons they literally pulled off a villain handover in the middle of the film i love it yeah like you they had you going for this guy and then he was eliminated and you're like, well, what the fuck's going on? And then they introduced a new villain. And that doesn't always work. No. And in this case, it really did. And and I'm sorry, but if, if you thought, well, it can't be the mom, then come on. You, you, you're, you don't read the news. Like, it could have been the mom. And even though we, we know yeah. deep down inside it was not likely to be the mom, we've all seen the stories of the family member who does the stuff to their kids and then leaves the kid. Oh, in like yes, we place. have. So it's like it it could have it could have been the mom. We don't know. The the movie's fucking with us. So we we don't we can't trust the filmmakers to sit there and like solve all of the world's problems for us. They they want us it's a January quote unquote yeah. horror release. They they are trying the first movie had eight hundred thousand, this is a nine point three. They want to make their money back, they wanna get us and I love I, that they, I they hope this is doing well. Even um, the friend, the I, friend was the last one to call. I was like, well, I, maybe yeah, the friend is 18, but maybe, you know, I just loved, I loved it. <laughs> well, also like when the antagonist gets it in the neck, finally, and that's never the end, the ends. Well, but you know. no, but it, it, yeah, but my audience went nuts, yeah. cheering, applauding, you name it. And then, he walked out and it just like, it was so beautiful. Like the last part of it where he's like sitting there, obviously typing something. And then the last character just repeats. And I pissed myself laughing. That's like I am. laughed out loud. Cause I knew exactly what had happened. Like the motherfuckers yeah. heads on the keyboard right now. Yeah. Um, you, but you, know yeah. you know what's skillful too is that's actually a callback too to the original opening montage into the actual title of the movie where she goes let's go oh, yeah. and she does that yeah. so like it's symmetry oh, yeah that's clever it's not an a to a comparison but it is symmetry and i think these are these are very skilled filmmakers that pull that um, or, also, or, or like, maybe a producer just had a good idea but that was the really running well. gag with angel's watch that had a, a very plot heavy payoff yeah and so this is this is what I, and i have the new apple watch i know how long batteries last i promise they don't last a month which is how long no, this, this was thing a lasts. fitbit he lost, he lost his oh, yeah, fitbit yeah, right. yeah. um so like w- w- when movies it are wasn't really... apple so the battery lasts longer there's no such thing as a perfect movie i love the god <laughs> i love the godfather i love citizen kane i love the wire there's no, no, no such thing as a perfect project 
I I love when they know what they can get away with and just have fun with it. And it's like if you hate them for it, go fuck yourself. Yeah. But like Javi should have known about the lock bridge. Minor detail, who gives a shit? The Apple Watch. They at least are aware that like it sh- the battery should have died, which becomes a plot point. But the battery yeah. was definitely dead. That party was like weeks ago, and the thing that never, you know what I mean. The fact that the the guy who has this like is a criminal from prison has an unsecured network. You know, yeah, we we're, we're gonna find these things. If you want to listen to a podcast where they just call all these things out, knock yourself out. But ultimately, what's the point? And it's yeah. like I think they did well, enough you, to keep you know, it thrilling and, and the, pull it. There was all this off. other quirky little things like the, the, the we all have that one relative that tries to use Siri for everything and just fucks it up. Up. and how i mean it i, I and thought that, that really even well that was yeah. worked in that like was yeah in. yeah like siri saved the fucking day in the end and and, and if that's not have. suspension of belief nothing's gonna happen <laughs> like, nothing is <laughs> And they, but they they knew what they did too. They cut away from it. They didn't need to like explain it. They just pulled it off. We wanted the happy ending, and then they go to visit you're Javi like, at the end, right? Yeah. They're going. That's where you're they're like, going. Yeah, you're like, well, this, um, searching ended in a very similar way. Fucking love Javi. Can we talk more about him? God damn it, oh, that was so god. Just... Yeah, I mean, so far the most likable character this year. I mean, well, yeah, early in the year still, but and like... then he, he even he got his resolve, which I think was one of the things that helped sell the end of the film for me i was moved i was fully moved yeah. and it was the javi moment even though storm reed and nia long and did a fantastic job but it was so seriously awesome but- like it got tense because i was like this guy is running around and there's some fucking conspiracy afoot and i was like i wasn't kidding i was like if anything happens to this guy i may check out of this film oh yeah <laughs> how good is that performance like you know you just, theater- you're just instantly lovable you know in theater where there's like a great scene and then like the stars of the scene lead and then like a supporting character gets the applause i was like because <laughs> that's what javi and his son got at the end it's like because yeah. the, the mom and the daughter reconcile but we kind of knew that they were going to and it was great and stuff so the fact that like their reconciliation brought javi and his son together now it's like yeah fuck yeah like <laughs> yeah. this movie was worth it yes everything was worth it Oh my it god! Was, it was good. I will. I will say one thing though. Like, for for anyone who has watched this uh, to this point and like is now listening, and you've been inspired by this film to possibly make your own like desktop film, do not, do not try and record your film over Zoom. <laughs> I'm saying this for visual effects guys and DPs everywhere. Do not try and re- get everyone to record their own video. It, it doesn't even matter if it's a like if it's a, if it's a webcam. If they've got a post 2022 like Mac, by all means, do that. If they don't, set up a fucking camera. Don't try and do this without it because oh my god, the shit that happens when you try to process video that has come over Zoom because it it's not the same. So don't do it. Set up your own cameras. Use Zoom as a communication tool by all means, but record a local copy. Oh, yeah. That's the only piece of advice I can offer to filmmakers out there anywhere. Don't yeah. use Zoom to record your movie. <laughs> um, well said. I have no notes on that. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. I have a proposal story I was going to say that was related to the lock bridge, but it doesn't matter. I also want to say Bunny Cake. That was a nice little um, deflection, I th- you know, because at one point, Bunny Cake... The, uh, bar- oh, yeah. the bartender slash possible actress. Oh, God, that was a little comedy thing for, for my audience. Like which, when she was like... Part? Oh, when she was on the... When she, she, the I just thought he was a visionary. Like there were no oh, yeah, cameras, yeah, yeah, there were yeah, no yeah. nothing. She's like, I just thought he was a visionary. Everybody in my audience pissed themselves laughing. Like there was some yeah. laugh out loud comedy in this. They mentioned the Tinder swindler on set at some point, right? Yeah. I love the twist that the computer was being monitored the whole time. That was... That's so... That was really fun. Um, Interstellar score... Um, I love my audience got mad when the mom and daughter were hugging. I feel like that's another horror trope when they finally reunite and it's like, you don't uh-huh. have time. <laughs> it's like, you have this. <laughs> everybody thinks that we want this payoff where it's like, Oh yes, they're together. And it's like, no, there's a murderer on the loose. Get the fuck out of there. And it's like, I yeah. feel like they, they handle that really well. Oh um, yeah. I, I had a vocal audience as well. They, they kind of let, they let that one go. Quick question. Um, do you think, do you think, well, two things. Number one, um, aspect ratio this the aspect ratio was not the full 230 so do you think that um this was just it's meant to just be popped right on this it doesn't have to be re-edited or anything it's yeah it's, right it was it, they it was desktop size yeah and um do you think netflix has the right I, I to this because <laughs> ne- netflix no. is the, netflix is the provider for the fucking un whatever it's called that they've been watching yeah no i i feel like that was a um 
like a, a deal they struck. They were like, we want to use this. Yeah, but did Netflix and not say only if we can release your movie? No, I, I feel like that was a promotional thing for them. It's like putting Netflix out there. They they needed it for a while. They're doing better now. But Do you think Netflix probably tried, though? They were like, we want the streaming rights. Yeah, right. They, oh, of course they tried. Come on, they're doing a cha- they're doing a handover we'll right now. We'll see what happens. But like, I mean, for fuck's sake, like, like, the, but this sort of film, like, you these are these are very hard to find unless you have like a fucking Tubi fucking subscription or Shutter yeah. or something like that. And it's it's like it's very hard to find these kind of films because the major streamers won't touch them for some reason. So if they do decide to to grab it, more power to them. As, as Dave as always says, if you do find the power to grab it, more power to you. <laughs> Wait, I I wasn't you, gonna buzz that, but I did. Do you think? Um, <laughs> do you think they purposefully at the opening showed us the Microsoft logo? I thought it was Microsoft, and then it said "delete Google account," and then on the desktop you saw Mozilla Firefox. Do you think they were personal, purposefully fucking with us by showing us three different internet providers? Or internet um, apps or servers, whatever they're called. Um, I mean, they they built those specifically for the time periods that the movies oh, are yeah, set. Yeah, that they, was cool. They, was they, cool, they yeah. did the same thing with searching. Uh, everything was built specifically for the browser experience you'd have in the time period. These guys really lent into it. I'm very so, glad that you've seen searching. Also, I would love for lovely dating to be a real thing. Although I doubt. I think there's plenty of dating apps. We don't need another one. Yeah, the kidnapping was cool. Um, there's just just a, there's a lot of good shit. Um, is there anything else that you want to mention? I mean, I feel like you know we've 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 covered this movie. There's of course more juice in the lemon, but you know there there is absolutely like just go and see this. This is this is great. And go and see it with as many it. see it yeah see it with as many people as you can, and then rewatch it again when it comes out in streaming. That'd be a good day movie. Let's, let's like, make this a hit. hit. Make it a hit. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. We. From Jeff and Dave here at the Love of Cinema. Go see this movie. Bring your friends. When it, when it becomes available to stream, watch it again. Watch it with a date and pretend like you haven't seen it. Or say you saw it and don't tell them that you saw it on a different date. <laughs> I just oh, realized. That's, that's thematic. <laughs> I just realized our gush alarm still has John gush, even though he's here and I'm on page two. Very curious. Wow. So John's drink thing is still on. That's a that, well, John. Where John, are you? Where drink. you are? <laughs> <laughs> Same time. We got a drink for the gush. We got a drink for the gush. Cheers. All right. And that ends that. And that ends that, folks. So we are going to wrap up our episode right here with a quick little. Fuck you, John. Oh, it's so inappropriate this week. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to wrap it up with a quick round of what's more fun when he's here. <laughs> but we give you, I know I have one for me too, but anyway, uh, where we tell you what we've been watching and give you our recommendations for the week. Dave, we'd like to start with you. What you got for us this week? What you've been watching? Well, I, um, this week I watched, uh, American horror story, the end of the, the new season. Nice. Um, it was an interesting twist on what they normally do. This one was very, very much social commentary of the 80s and the mm-hmm. AIDS epidemic and stuff like that. The last three or four episodes are brutal. Um, and I also got into that 90s show. That 90s show, nice. I don't hit sitcoms very often, but uh, I, we gave it a look and... It's a solid entry. Like it's it's actually quite fucking funny. And they do the they do the um the Fuller House thing, right? Where they have basically the whole cast in the first episode. Are they in the whole no, thing? No, no, they're not. They you get like you get two of them, then you get two uh, more of them for smart. like five they're, seconds. Yeah, then you get Fez in the second episode, and then they just I move say, on to the a normal story. And Fuller, Fuller House fucked that up, where they were like, "Here's all of us," but now for the rest of the series, you get DJ. And it's yeah, like, right. Oh, all right. I wish Damos was come back. Yeah, but no. Um, or the guy no, that this, once dated Alanis Morris. This really worked. We we watched it just on a whim. We're like, all right, let's see how, how good it is. And uh, we then watched like six more fucking episodes wow. straight away. So yeah, it was it was pretty good. Uh, and I also watched um, the. Mo- I'm trying to turn. <laughs> I'm trying to turn John's drink thing off, but anyway. you can't. That's what she um, said. It's not. Just fuck it. Just fuck me. Sorry, that was meant for me. (laughs) You buzz the shit out of me, and you're the drunk one. What else did you watch? (laughs) Um, I also uh, watched Kids vs. Aliens, but I'm not going to talk about that because I'm talking about it tomorrow night on the Matt and Mark movie show. 
Ah, Dave. Mm. So if you want to hear what I thought of that, Kids vs. Aliens came out this week in theaters and on streaming. You got to wreck it, wreck it, wreck it, wreck it. That's Matt Mark movie show racket thing where they turn. It really is. So you'll have have to tune into their show. Those motherfuckers Uh, watch so much shit that their recommendations every single week turn into like a 40-minute episode all on its own. (laughs) (laughs) Married life sounds fun. It sounds Um, like me with COVID. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know why I'm buzzing. It's not negative at all. Um, did you say Last of Us yet? Uh, last week I watched the first episode, first like the hour and 20 minute episode. Oh, yeah. You mentioned it last week, yeah. Because yeah. um, we recorded on Monday last week. This week we're recording on Sunday. So the next episode comes out like now, it's basically. now, yeah. So sorry we haven't seen it, but well, what'd you, you, you liked it, right? Because I watched it since then. Fuck, I love that show. It was great. I it too. Yeah. I, you know what I watched? Because it's basically part A, part B of the first episode. And I, 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 I put it into two parts. Sorry, guys. I did the Irishman thing where I took my break, even though it's one episode. Like and two hours of that was definitely necessary for the first episode. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, the yeah. first episode, I, I remember afterwards, and I took I, the next day. I was just like looking it up because everybody's talking about it, and it had like a ninety nine percent and a ninety eight percent audience score. And I was like, "Holy shit!" Like yeah. I, knew, I, I liked it, and I know Rotten Tomatoes is sort of a not an imperfect metric because like if you get a hundred people giving it a seven, the, it has a hundred percent, even though it's a seven on the meta score. You know what I mean? The Metacritic would see that, but mm. like. I was like, I was just a little surprised that it was 99. And then I finished the episode and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I needed to go through that. Yeah. I yeah, just, that last fucking shot is literally a shot from the video game. It's amazing. Yeah. I will say, and another podcaster said this too, because I knew that the one girl wasn't in the trailer, I did watch it without as many stakes. I, you know, I knew that there was going to mm. be a jump and a change. And for some reason that, I don't know if that imp- in fact impacted my viewing or not, but, but I... I'm very I mean, I, I 100% it. knew what was coming. I, I played the game. That's cool. That's fucking so, cool. like, yeah, I, I, I knew I, I knew that first, like, 20 minutes was going to rip your guts out. Yeah, so. man, I can't wait for Liana Mormont to just rip my fucking heart out. Yeah. Um, hmm. So I watched The Last of Us. I forgot to. I forgot if I mentioned in the past that I watched Barry Lyndon recently. Um, it's a very long Kubrick movie, but it was so surprising and so good. Even though it's Kubrick, it was very different from his other movies, and I fucking Even loved it. Even though it was Kubrick, <laughs> don't buzz you for that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, no. I don't mean like it. Just it's so different from 2001 and The Shining and A Clockwork oh, yeah. Orange and Paths of a Glory and all these other movies we've seen. Uh, um, um, Full Metal Jacket and stuff is so different from all of those, but it's so good. It's so good. Oh my god. Anyway, so. I, I always forget what I watch and I never write them down. I've definitely, oh, very random. Matt, Dave and I are both going to be on um, Film versus Film podcast next week. So check out our socials to see when we're going to do that. And we're talking about Wait, we're both movies. on that? I didn't know about that. You said you wanted to do it. <laughs> I, I No, but I, I thought you were doing it and you were going to give me a future date. I didn't know I was on that. Oh, I'll give you a future. I mean, it's we're just talking to them. Well, fuck it. I watched the Meryl Streep. You can. It's it's next week if you want to talk about Meryl Streep movies, or you can just. I'll just. I'll give you. You can. I've pick seen a lot of Meryl Streep movies. So yeah. All right. Well, we can decide off air about yeah. this. But anyway, I hadn't seen any of the Mike Nichols, and two of them are not streaming. I, Silkwood and Heartburn are not streaming, but postcards from the from the edge is, and I just really wanted. I was like, I just I need to do this, and yeah. I. Meryl Streep is a fucking gift from above. That movie yeah. is so great. I kind of think is Nora. I'm um, sorry. Carrie Fisher wrote the screenplay. The other two were Nora Ephron. Carrie Fisher wrote the screenplay based on her novel. And it's semi-autobiographical about living yeah. in the mom shadow and being an actress and having a drug addiction. Little, I mean, little known thing. Carrie Fisher wrote a lot of screenplays. She was a fixer in Hollywood for some time. And, and I found that out afterwards. This one is very like, it's her, it's her book. So it's very yeah. much her. And Meryl Streep is playing obviously a Meryl Streep biased version of her, but like, I do kind of think that what was written was funnier than what I saw. So maybe at the time it read differently, but I love that Mike Nichols just lets the actors act. He doesn't do mm. like nowadays there's cutaways, there's style. Oh, there were so many just still frames of like her and Gene Hackman just for like two minutes, just like talking to each other. And, but she is just the fucking best. And I, I know we all knew I mean, that, you, but Gene like Gene Hackman and Meryl Streep sitting in the same fucking scene, dude. You, not you even don't, that. Don't move the camera. G, Gene Hackman's a, he's a, he's a, he's a cameo role in this so is yeah. R- richard dreyfus all these people just came in because she it's oh, just Street little movie. just little known not 
awesome yeah. actors. But yeah. really, Shirley MacLaine as her mom and Meryl Streep. It's like, well, I don't know yeah. what else you need. It's fucking incredible, this movie. And it's some of the best work I've ever seen on film is this Meryl Streep performance in it. Which, of course, is like, yeah, of course. But like, I've seen Sophie's Choice. I've seen Kramer vs. Kramer. I've seen The French Lieutenant. So I've seen all of her other movies. But this one, like, really pop. This is like, if I yeah. just wanted to know who she was. Every other person nominated for an Oscar that you watched that and went off. Oh fuck she already had two that's the only reason she didn't win is that yeah. there's a meryl streep role which i'll talk about on film versus film which is she's up against herself at a certain point where people were like "Ooh, this other person can win oh meryl was so good though and it's like well ah, i like sophie's choice better so maybe i guess that justifies me giving it to this person because you're just not going to find a better performance than that it's one of the best things i've ever seen in my life postcards from an edge meryl streep mike nichols uh, that's enough i gotta move on oh and i finished um slow horses season two so that's what i did this week we should wrap it up there. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Oh, we, we hit, hit an hour, hour. Fuck, without John. <laughs> Damn it. And that's not even with the docile music at the end too, that you're going to play on the outro. But anyway, Dave, such a pleasure as always. I'm glad we pivoted to this. I believe we're going to yeah. do after sun next week. Finally. Yes, we're going to talk about absolutely. After sun. Yeah. Paul Mescal, who is apparently going to be in the new gladiator movie. Uh, that's it. All right. Thanks so much. Film fans. Anything before we go, Dave? Yep. Bye.